and they're nothing but sex and You see, they are the chosen ones that they have because they know that they will regurgitate whatever they put out without question. Perhaps my angle provided an advantage point that would give me some details that would counter what's written in here, and it did actually, but at the time none of us knew that. But they knew. That's why they don't want somebody like me around. That's why they make a big deal. At this point, there's more than a half a dozen officers surrounding me. They're arguing with me, I'm arguing with them. I say, see how stupid this is? You're here for a crime that was committed, but now I'm the center of attention. I came up here, said nothing to no one, did nothing except I had a camera in my hand. There's ca now there's TV cameras. They're trained that way, but the photographers are looking at me. They're all seeing this. They want to catch you and you. President is saying, you know, hey, you know, you're right, but you know, this is the way to handle it. This is, hmm. stay out of this way. I, I'm going to get to this in a second, but I have to share this with you because I want you, I have to build this foundation of why it's so important to have independent media. It's so, so important. So anyway, all this is going on, back and forth. I've been threatened with the rest numerous times now. The one guy that I call Lefty Pig, he's he stay away from me. The same one I told him I'd give him bodily harm if he touched me. Commissioner Bats is walking up. Their backs are turned. I see him. He steps in. What's going on around here? I said, you tell me, uh, Commissioner, your officers are threatening to arrest me. I'm standing in a public space on a public sidewalk. I don't know why I'm becoming the center of attention here. I didn't ask for it. And he reaches out his hand to shake, and I look at it, I look at him, and I said, no, I'm sorry. I said, that's not going to fix what's going on here. Nobody apologizes, and neither will I, so I'm sorry. So he decided to sue to get my story and to report back to him. Let's go to this story. New details emerged Thursday in police and mall shootings that left one man dead in South of Baltimore, another one in North So right away, you start with the linguistic program. New details, that's supposed to key you in to think, wow, we're really going to get the scoop now. See, we're really good. We really got something. As you can read on, it tells you that in the span of less than two hours, two people were shot there. The first key here is the man that's dead appeared to be impersonating an officer doing a burglary. Okay. How was he appearing to impersonate a police officer? They said he had a t shirt that said police, so you can buy those anywhere. I mean, really, that, if I wore a t shirt that said Raven, then I would impersonate a football day. Probably not. No one would accuse me of that, but somehow, well, this, this is how they start to key your mind. It didn't say he was wearing a shirt that said police. That, that's buried in the detail later. Immediately it says he appeared to be. That's the program. Like I said, if you're wearing a Raven shirt, nobody says you appear to be impersonating a football player or, or anything like that. I appear to be impersonating a Black Panther member because I'm wearing all black. It doesn't work like that. But when they write the story, it's so subtle. So subtle and so ingrained that half the time they don't even realize they do it. It's right. just it's just automatic. So that's that's right away where the nonsense starts. How does the man appear to be impersonating a police officer? Then third paragraph already, instead of being critical and, and parsing this out, we have the praise. The police department credited the officers with quick responses that stopped two crimes. Really? <laughs> But you see, this is, a, is this written by a PR agent or a journalist? He's supposed to be questioning. Praise the officers. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? Uh, Fourth paragraph. The identity of the man killed Wednesday has not been released. Why? It's still not released. We've been on this all weekend. Now, this is Wednesday. I understand you have to notify next to Ken and all that, but there's something more to the story. We don't know what. <laughs> now, without reading through all of it, we know that there were two men supposedly impersonating the police officers. One's dead. Right. Where's the other one? What happened to him? Is he arrested? Now, if he's arrested, you don't have to wait to release his name. That's a public record. That hasn't been released. I asked a simple question. Could he really have been a police officer? I don't know. But when you withhold the details, it makes minds like mine think like that. Was he undercover? We don't know who he is. We don't know if he was arrested. And if they're both the first name police officer, you shoot one, why didn't you shoot the other one? Did you know him? Are you trying to whitewash this? Are you trying to bury this under? It sounds crazy to some people. Read Serpico's book from what, 40 years ago now? And find out how dirty cops are from a cop's own perspective. Frank Serpico. I think everybody knows who Detective Serpico is. If it was happening then, I can guarantee you it's happening now. But I really want to get further into this, okay? Uh, yes. Let's go back to the 7 Eleven. Police said they did not find a weapon on the suspect in the Northwest Baltimore convenience store. But believe the officer was justified in firing on the man because she believed he was armed. And I think you're armed. Like, boom! I just, I thought you were armed. I'm sorry. I mean, that's being black in Baltimore. That's okay now. Now, now, mind you, I have a 
four minutes, but none of these guys are there, and I'm having trouble getting it out of my phone. I have it on my video camera, also good upload. It's Deputy Commissioner Rodriguez giving a briefing right there on the scene of what really happened. Not one of these stations aired the whole thing. Part of what he says is we have very strict rules of when an officer can and can't shoot. Right. Not this is just believe whatever. He makes it clear. He, you know, he's, he's, he's walking down the middle. He's not this way or that way. But conveniently, that's left out of all the dialogue. I've and there are very strict rules. Part of it is if you're in imminent danger. If I just believe you have a weapon, that doesn't put me in imminent danger. I've had law enforcement training. They don't like to tell you that because it, it, it helps to discredit them. I've locked up more people than I can remember in numerous capacities. I understand when and when to use a weapon. It's called the use of force continuum. If I believe you have a weapon and it's on you, but it's not in your hand, I cannot shoot you. Just because I believe you have one, I can subdue you. Now, if you try or something that's different. But just because I believe you have a weapon. But see, this doesn't tell you this. It immediately starts telling, well, the officer believed he had a weapon, so they opened fire. Now, it's the, 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 the muddled masses out there. It's like, the gun could have had a weapon. I guess she was justified. It's very subtle. But when you read story after story after story like this, and you're not thinking outside the box, it, it does get ingrained in your, in your brain. If you go down near the bottom here, Fourth paragraph from the bottom. They don't know what they want to write between Fenton and Tom County because it says there the description of the man he got, right? But then if you go down to the, to the bottom, it says he handed to seven the gun clerk that he had a weapon in his, in his jacket. None was found. He just grabbed the tail. It didn't seem like he had any weapon on. So which one is it? It's both, they're both there. He just grabbed it and didn't see. So no one ever saw a weapon, and truly no one even saw someone hitting that weapon, because this is their own words. This is the clerk watching the video. It didn't seem like he had a weapon. He was walking out of the store with a cash till. Let's be clear. This is a bad dude. You don't want him coming here. He thinks he can just grab whatever he wants. This is a criminal. We want people like this one. Arrested, prosecuted, put in jail. Not shot on sight. I saw the till dropped in the parking lot. If I'm holding this, and you think I have a weapon, well, this isn't a weapon. And unless I start to do like this, there's no way you're justified in shooting because I may have had a weapon, but now you're seeing me like this. The man was walking out the store with the cash till in his hand. Deputy Commissioner Rodriguez, they have reviewed the video. There's video all over that parking lot and inside. They will never let us see it because that's exactly what it shows. I asked twice to get confirmation if that's really what happened. Yes, he was walking out with the till. Just a block. Below there, at the Madonna subway station, another man was shot by a police officer, also female, and I'll tell you why that's important in a second. He was running. He was simply escaping. He was shot dead. This guy was basically escaping. He was shot dead. Deborah McKissick, another female officer, has shot how many people now? Three, four people in, 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 in East Baltimore? She's in his size. <laughs> I'm making a point. I'm all for equality. If you're capable of doing what the job requires, you should be able to get it. But if you're not trained right, man or woman, and you feel that to compensate for my lack of speed, size, agility, whatever, I may not be able to take this guy down physically. I need to shoot him. That's a problem. That's a huge yeah. problem. Like I said, I've arrested people from shoplifters to murderers to people with 14 federal warrants, whatever. Nine times out of 10, Seems like because of what I did, we sneak up on them. And I was impersonating the Ravens player at that time. We just slammed him. I mean, it happens so quick, they don't know what happens. This guy is going on the ground. There's, you know, I was almost 300 pounds then coming down. Before he knows that he's in handcuffs. It happened so quick, there was no time to reach for a weapon. And we thought a lot of these people were That's why we did it like that. But we can't allow the media to perpetuate this police myth that anybody they think is dangerous deserves to be shot because they're right for a prop well, that, that's what it is. I call them propaganda pushers. You know that. Yet, like I said, let's be clear. Yes, this person is a criminal. We have a criminal justice system to deal with that. We don't have summary execution. We didn't die. That's good. Maybe he'll have a chance to tell his story. I just have a slight problem with the... Uh, <clears throat> we have a criminal justice well, system, and we all think that somebody robbing a store should be arrested and put in jail. I don't believe that. I don't believe we have a criminal justice system. I believe we have a criminal injustice system, and I don't believe that people should be locked up 
for pretty much any reason, certainly not robbery. I think there's lots of better options, uh, like the destruction of global capitalism. <laughs> 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 standpoint, I'm actually with her on that. Um, I, I'm, I'm using the terms I'm using just to, just yeah, to brief, but if you really broke down saying. my view on incarceration and everything long before it happened to me, that is how I feel. We use it as a cure-all for it. I'll get to you in a moment there. But again, I said we have to get to the root of things. We're not going to get it. I'm dealing with the media yeah. aspect of it, but why was this man robbing that store? Just because he wanted to be a badass? Probably not. It was probably out of deep desperation. Where did that desperation come from? And we can go down that. Of course, that's a whole other class of discussion. But that really is the true problem in Baltimore. What is driving, you're probably seeing this in your job, like that, the, the desperation that's so prevalent here. That's the driving the crime. It's not because we have guns on the street. Well, what brought the guns on the street? You know what I mean? I mean, you got to go to the root of it. You don't look at the tool that's being used or even necessarily the person. I mean, everyone has the personal responsibility, yes, but there's something larger driving that. There is conditions that perpetuate this desperation, and nobody's really looking to alleviate that, not the mayor, not the police commissioner. Like I said during my, my famous broadcast, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. You just want to bash it on his head. You know, it's okay. it's, that's, that's what you do. You hit him too hard to hit brakes. You hit him the wrong way to start spinning. You know, it, it's, not, it's not very effective if that is the uh, summation of the problem. We have one from here. I'm almost done. We, we, we needed the intro, too. Everybody should use the time. My name is Leon Paul. I'm thinking. <laughs> if you don't want to be on camera, I'll keep it on camera. Uh, okay. The crime is. Something needs, something has to be done. Something has to be done about this crime because this crime is going way too far. Too much killing in this city. I mean, you know what? Every single person in here does not, does not only be violent sometimes, but you put, you think about putting somebody in jail, and you think about using a gun. Just think of something you can't do and just be a positive influence for, for somebody else. I will say, the way our policing is done in these neighborhoods and the amount of it that the young kids are exposed to, mm -hmm. it does perpetuate a mindset of violence. Even the policing mm -hmm. does. It perpetuates it. This is how you deal problem. You draw your gun. Yeah. Just because they're the good guys, it's still a violence mindset that would teach kids. That it seems a problem solved. So when they have their little problems as teenagers and they already have access to gun, well, you've seen the police kick in the door. It, it, it's all violence. It doesn't matter how you justify it. Yeah. You know? and, and, and when you're forced to comply with the, the barrel of a gun, I'm not threatening your life. You're just forced to like, come out of your house or else we're coming to kill you, which is what they told me. You know, and I invited them to come in. I'm not coming. You come in and kill me. Go ahead and do that. So we'll see how crazy this is. I would think, God, I wouldn't be able to see myself, but you all would have, you know. That, that, that's violence. There's nothing else to call it. We, under the guise of government, are the largest perpetuators of violence in the world. We, this country, this United States. I say we because, you know, I take some ownership of it. Uh, because, you know, I have my life, I work on that side of it. You know what I mean? But uh, I want to get, I want to finish getting through this. But yes, that a lot of our violence here, we don't know necessarily where it started yet, but we know it's being kept alive by both sides. Some of it overtly, and some of it covert. They want to keep it alive, or else they all have jobs. In the Netherlands, where my youngest son lives, they've been closing down jails. They're empty. They have people standing around like this that are jail guards. There's nobody in them. They've figured out how to have a relatively peaceful civil society without having everybody in jail. Now, of course, they do have decriminalization of a lot of things over there, prostitution, drugs, and all things. And that has a direct effect on it. But again, that's another story. But the point is that this is just Iris' thing further. They don't jail everybody. Rabbi, uh, everybody meeting there. about police And they don't have a problem. So okay. they're doing something right that we can learn. Getting back to this little piece of propaganda with the new details on these two police <laughs> shootings. New details, right? I'm reading from the second page of the fourth paragraph where we're, learning, we're, we're, we're hearing from the, the police post. It appears the officer presumed the suspect had a weapon because she wow. saw the clerk with his hands in the air. Now, if you will notice, you've heard me say this several times because it's in the article several times. That's how you program. You repeat. You repeat. That's how little kids memorize things. So you want to keep 
being told that it's okay because she thought that. Well, I can think of a lot of things. I can think my neighbor's plot would kill me and just preemptively strike him. Why not? Police can do it. This is how we perpetuate a mindset of violence in the city, by making this okay, by not questioning it, by not putting it out there that eh, something's a little off here. Now, I wouldn't go as far as saying her intent was criminal. She may have really been just trying to stop the man, but I think it was negligent. I think personally that it was wrong. I think it's a violation of policy that I know they have internally as to when you shoot and when you can't. I know all the hours and hours of drilling I've taken of shoot and don't shoot scenarios where you use real people, dummies, a simulation, guns, all this stuff. There's time when you shoot, there's time when you don't. Obviously, in this case, the officer believed the individual had a handgun. I'm, re I'm not repeating. This is another line. I can't tell you how many lines in here where it says that she believes, she believes, she believes. So now belief is justification. Obviously. For violence. That's the key word that he's using over and over. Again. Yes. I, it sounds like I'm repeating myself. I'm not. I'm scrolling through this thing, and you keep hearing that the officer believed this. So when they kill me, they're going to say they believe because of my past, isn't that, that I was a danger to them. That, that's, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> you feel that you're in danger or someone is in danger around you, you have to use whatever force is necessary to keep a felony from happening or to keep those around you safe. Mm. Well, the felony already happened, so they weren't keeping anyone from it. He had the cash. And we don't know that it was a felony because they said they don't know how much money was in the cash. Shorty, you know it's only a felony if it's, what, over a certain dollar amount. Wow. It's very key there, but nobody points that out to you. It's in the article, we don't know how much <laughs> cash was in there, but you're being told to keep a felony from happening. You know the cash registers in the 7-Elevens, they don't they have don't them for $20, they don't keep, no money. They drops all the time. Money drops all the time. Okay, let's be clear. So that eliminates that, 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 that felony. But they don't want you to know that. 7-Elevens, mm -hmm. bottom line. Do you see how much I'm getting out of just one article? These articles are turned out every day like this. Every day. And most of the time, none of us have the time to break down things. I, I, I do have analysis all the time. So this is what I do. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy looking at the wordplay. Words make words. They do. They make the words create the world that, that you dwell in. Maybe not physically, but mentally it does. And I'm, I'm showing you just one little article that's written every day how we're being told in the city that you know these criminals are running rampant and we have to kill them to stop them. It's essential if you break it down because we have to stop these felonies from happening. The, the crime is out of control and how else do we stop them? We praise the officers for their quick response because there's just so much crime here. How else do we do it but just have officers quickly responding and doing what? Shooting them, because that's what this article is about. It's about two police involved shootings. So we're, we're actually setting the tone for many more of these to happen this year. And hey, if they don't shoot them, you know, the officers exercise restraint by not drawing their weapons. They just beat them to death. It's funny. <laughs> Last week they had an award ceremony for oh. officers. 30 officers were given awards. And it was interesting that out of 30, 12 of them were being rewarded for, you know, shooting and killing somebody else. And those 12, they got the silver awards. And the officers that got bronze awards were the ones who were able to subdue the suspects who were armed without killing them. So they get, they're being rewarded more so for killing the suspects. They get rewarded for bad behavior. Yeah, pretty right. much. Now, now yeah, that, you. once these officers kill somebody, they go to pay administrative right. So they're, they're literally getting a vacation to kill someone. There's no, you know, And this goes to that Officer's Bill of Rights we have here, which we're very unique in the 50 states. We're one of few that have some rights. I track this stuff all over the country. Most of the times, these officers do something, a lot of times they're suspended, they don't get paid. Mm -hmm. Very few places allow them to get paid. But this great democratic progressive state that's for the people, you know, we <laughs> get these guys. This, uh, this this pat on the back when it happens. Um, they're taken off the street at all, which has been my issue for weeks on it. Yeah. They will not no, tell they me be. what triggers somebody being pulled off. They the haven't said whether they, they got not the the They take them on the street right. and they do something. One of the reasons I got blocked, actually, the question so, is, 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 that he, in response to one of your questions, was like, I think, it was basically, I had zero tolerance for, you know, officers who right. step out of line. And I was like, if you have zero tolerance, why was one of the officers who was involved in the beating death of Tyrone West still on the street over a week later when the family had a vigil? Where the officer was at the family vigil. So you're back at the spot where you had just killed a man, 
where you should have been on administrative leave, but they still had to suspend the officers here. So how, why does it take so long for these officers to be suspended? Off of that, I didn't get any answer. He just blocked me. I didn't know about that, but thank you. I have to ask you. I'm Angela. I'm just asking you But we asked over and over again. There were several of us trying to ask this question because two of the officers had already beaten somebody else two weeks prior. And so we were saying, what triggers an automatic removal from the street? And they would not answer. There is no automatic. It's very subjective. Gaheem Chichashamba, who's doing time now for killing a man, he had shot so many people before, his time was justified. He was drunk on duty, knocked over an off-duty, knocked over a gas station, a pump. And the guy sued him, and he avoided paying him. He did all kinds of crazy things, and they never suspended him. They were high marks. We didn't even know about this until afterwards. These guys do things all the time, get away with it. And that's what happens. They feel that they can do whatever they want until a guy kills some girl, I mean, some guy for talking to his girl, essentially. And I thought, that's where it goes. I'll tell you how far it goes when they don't discipline these guys properly. Detective Fox. Yes, that's just about right. Okay, he's fired, he's off the force, whatever. He's got no jail time, probation. He'd beaten people, stomp people. One of them's called a video criminal. I mean, just beating the snot out of the guy. Since then, he's gotten so many promotions. He's worked in every division. He's been on the helicopter, he's been a canine. They love the guy. And eventually, this guy got so full of himself, he shoots himself in the leg at police headquarters, makes up this tall tale about some vague black man who attacked him, and he had to return fire and without a description. It looked just like me. No, no, literally didn't. No, no, it literally didn't look just like me. Father and I, we go back a long way. It's so funny. You saw when I tweeted it, right? The description is that vague artist rendering, but it's their version of me, which is just hilarious. If I happened to be walking around there at that time, they would have yeah, absolutely been. Yeah, because you would have been a And how, who knows how long it would take to disprove the thing. There were no shell cases found of any other weapons or anything. The guy lied. But do you know how long it took for that to happen? The police didn't get him. Bernstein got him for what? Work miscomp fraud. They didn't get him through the foul of false police report and all this stuff. Work but this guy, fraud. he got away with so much that he felt, hey, he could do this. The guy lives in a really large house up in Pennsylvania, getting all that money he gets out of the city from just depressing these people. He was one of the knockers, by the way. That was his last post. Yeah. He went kicking in doors every night, getting people for all kinds of warrants. Some and of them might every be morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, they meet at Starbucks. Yeah. And they meet at the different Starbucks in the area that they're going to kick them in. I sit at Starbucks every morning and, and, and at 5 o'clock, and I watch them. And on Route 40, and down in the city, the Crown Gas Station on York Road. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's the nose spot. All right, uh, and, and, and I usually just follow, if you see one or two cars going in one direction, follow the cars. They're going to take you to the other cars. <laughs> just don't speed and get caught up, you know what I'm saying? But if you want to do what, do what, do what we do, <laughs> you got to be careful, because there ain't no rules to this. I'm going gonna, gonna to finish up because I don't think you have a lot to say. In the future, though, if you want to learn a little bit more about doing what I do and doing it better than me, the three of us, we're going to have some talks on just on that, on the street journalism aspect of it. But keeping to the, the police team, I'm going to wrap this up. I remember when Justin George proudly tweeted that he had an update to the story. And I even talked to Rodney King's lawyer, he said. That's the immediately add credibility that really isn't there. What does Rodney King's lawyer know about Baltimore? But it sounds cool. There's two different attorneys quoted in this picture in the story. Not one of them is from Baltimore. Not one of them has intimate knowledge of the trail of brutality that this department has been conducting there. So their statements, though, you know, nice and clinical and academic, they don't have any relevance to the local conditions. And this is what they, we get as journal liars. Um, but they are both in their introductions. They're set up as people we would expect to want to hold the police accountable. And then they pull probably the like one tiny little thing that they said that was like there might have been a time when it could have been okay to shoot somebody. And they probably talked for like 20 minutes about how this was probably not that time and they please should not be shooting people. But they just so they make us think it's really deceptive. Make us think that the author of When Cops Kill and Rodney King's lawyer think that this was justifiable. You know, it's, it's so funny. First of all, Lance Larusso, the author, when the cops kill, so this guy, Doctor, well, he's a police union attorney. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, so I wonder where he might lean, just that he's a police union attorney. I don't know him, but I just I wonder. Then we go down to John Burris, a California lawyer. 
The first the quote yeah, from him is, it may be a justifiable shooting, which leads to what Iris is saying. Mm -hmm. The whole guy's conversation, who knows which way it went, but we just get the little snippet. But again, they didn't go through it. The guy says, pay. the Rodney King guy says, it may be a justifiable shooting, but blah, blah, blah. Yet the way they introduce the quote yeah. is, it's not unreasonable. <laughs> for, it's like, he didn't say that here. So what did he actually say to make you attribute that belief to him? Exactly. If anything. And, and, and like I said, <laughs> just like everything else, you sift through it enough, you do get some kernels and grains of truth. He said, I probably don't know if there were any independent witnesses. So do we. We don't know who that second guy is, and they're not letting us find out who he is. He's a secret. If you're charged with the crime, as I well know, your name is immediately released. Such a way.